Welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll look at the C64 OCP, the overcurrent protection circuit. And I've already tested it. It's on my table here. And uh, <laughs> the problem is uh, we are going to look at the problem. And uh, the problem is actually something to do that I didn't think about when I designed the circuit. So however, I want to thank the sponsor PCBWay for sending me these boards. Let's see if we can find the rest. <laughs> However, this one is really nice. I have soldered it up already. I didn't show you that. But uh, this video will be about getting this board up and running and finding out what is wrong with it. And then we will make the fixes for the next video. Yeah, so over here they are. We have a C64 saver. I think I showed that in the other way video as well. I have several versions of this now. It's uh, the SMD version and then we have the ordinary version. <laughs> now this is the OCP which I have soldered up. So it has the overcurrent there and the MOSFET there and then red, green and orange. Orange is the overcurrent. Thank you so much PCBWay for sending this and this video is sponsored by PCBWay. <laughs> I have been doing this schematic for a long time ago. I wanted to make something more simpler than my C64 saver with the add-on board because the add-on board is insanely complex. So, and also I felt like uh, designing myself up in the corner when I had those uh, ex uh, expandable ports here <laughs> for the add-on board or any other boards that I wanted to make for it. So I removed those and instead I put a ship here that uh, handles overcurrent. So I thought that was missing on this board actually, overcurrent. Because uh, my friend Retro, he had uh, tried this board and he had uh, connected it up to his machine. And there was something wrong in his machine. And they pulled the voltage down to 2.5 volts. Why 2.5 volts? I think uh, it's because then... Uh, this uh, transistor goes into like a, if, it, uh, if you know transistors they go into linear region then it would be a good thing if it had a current limit thing on it so <laughs> so but yeah so I've done some initial tests and uh, you and uh, I guess I'm talking region again um, it also has a reset function this uh, max 4373 ship so uh, the main feature of this is that it can detect overcurrent and it has a latch and uh, you can reset that latch afterwards. So that's what the yellow uh, LED is for uh, here. So whenever there's a fault there it will uh, lit up. That's the idea. I haven't tested it yet. So, <laughs> so to bring this up I have a limited current. It's maybe a bit time but Let's start at uh, 3 volts, 100 millivolt volt at a time. Let's turn it on. So I'm going to tell you what the voltage is whenever we see it change. Oh, there you can see the screen. Now it's 4.1, 4.2, 5 volts. Let's see. Oh, 5.5. <laughs> and then if I go down to 5.3, it goes off. So, and I can go up to 12 volts, it should handle that. Now I see the uh, meter is actually starting to draw some current here, but... And the LED is really strong. No, I haven't uh, been able to test the yellow LED yet, which is supposed to be cutting off if you yeah, pull too much current across here. Yeah, so <laughs> to be able to see anything on the output. I have an LED here with a built-in resistor so I can just poke it around and see if it lights up. See 5 volt and ground here it should light up but it doesn't so something is wrong. You have to just figure it out and um, however the indication with those, these two LEDs is a good sign that the uh, detection circuit is working properly so there's something wrong with the uh, yeah, the, uh, getting the power out to the LED there. So, don't simply add overcurrent protection. It's guarded by... 
Yes, yeah, so I've been uh, testing a little bit and uh, trying to figure out the fault why the output doesn't turn on when uh, we remove the solder ball here and use the overcurrent protection circuit. So when there's no overcurrent and the latch is off, that means you press reset or you just turn it on and there's no overcurrent. And then this C out, which is means c comparator out. Uh, it's low. It's an open collector output. That means it's uh, it's now clamping it to ground. And this ground, I was thinking I could use here. So in that case, I will would wanted to just stack this transistor on top there again. Now, the voltage is not zero volt here. Uh, it's more like zero point six. And also it depends on how much current you pull and it's just 2 milliamperes so I can't really do so much about that so uh, it was not such a great idea and I thought maybe oh the voltage here was so high but it's not that high the problem is that this voltage over the base to emitter is uh, too low that means that this transistor is in the liner region is almost turning off so there's a big voltage difference here so what we could do then is to uh, reduce the voltage drop over this uh, voltage divider that's one solution we could do actually that could work and the reason why I have the voltage divider in the first place is because of tolerances in uh, these and tolerances here so there's no that's just so much you can do so then the next option would be to move this point up here or this uh, line up here and then have the solder ball now that won't work because uh, normally this one is uh, grounded so that means that this was this will always be off meaning that this is also off so no and then I was thinking hmm uh, what if we put it here through a resistor like next to this one yeah that could work I just have to change this value now <laughs> the problem is that is it really 0 0.6 volt all the time so I was thinking okay so if you have a overcurrent uh, situation the voltage point here will jump up and that means it will trip here I don't really want to interfere with the precision of this uh, sensing network so what's the next thing I can do <laughs> well we have already have a transistor here for the LED which is connected to the C out and this can work actually because this one is powerful so if I connect the um, the collector no wait the source here up here I think that can work ah then the LED won't work so then I will have to add another transistor and there's a lot of components here already so I'm not sure if that's a very good idea I can ditch the yellow LED uh, I can add another transistor and keep the yellow LED but I figure out I can actually connect the auto output of this transistor directly here then this red LED would turn on when there's a fault so even though I don't have the yellow LED anymore I will have this one so so we have removed the yellow LED check the schematic and uh, this is the LED so I will connect here and uh, the schematic says here but I see there goes a line up here Okay, there you go, it's a red flaky, but hopefully it's not shorting anything else, and I don't think it is. So, there we have a very large loop. Damn it, I need to go to sleep anyway. <laughs> I forgot, uh, I need to solder this one, uh, and then make a cut here, or somewhere. <laughs> because this won't operate if I solder this output to ground here <laughs> that won't work so oh. now I get to sleep it's too late
Oh. But it tickled my mind, so I actually got to do it anyway. <laughs> okay, in the morning, in the morning. Yep, I've been looking at data sheets and it's not looking good. So I also checked some of my other savers that I made and, uh, recently. They have about 150 millivolts from end to end. So that's a bit much actually. Uh, that's with connector. Uh, resistance also so maybe about say 130 millivolts and uh, same for this one we saw at 1.2 that was at uh, 0.8 amps by the way but here it's at uh, 1.2 amps when I tested it here I dug out some old savers and uh, here we have the latest 1.3 I think uh, I don't make these anymore. I used to sell them. And this is the prototype, which is basically the same thing, but uh, it was a bit awkward circuit. <laughs> so if you see here, you have a red LED in there. It's a, it's quite sexy. Uh, I think that that kind of works as well. Oh. Anyway, so if I set it to 5.1 volts, and then I switch on this. Uh, this is a tester board actually. If you apply voltage here, you can uh, drive this one with this uh, voltage regulators and uh, this microcontroller will step the voltage up and down to find the threshold. However, this is not what we are doing now. We are feeding uh, voltage directly in here and then we have the meter across the input to the output. So that's the reason why you see zero on the meter right now. Even though it's on, it's uh, green and everything, but when we start to pull current, look, draws 0.9, it's 82. And 82 across all of these connections is a lot better than 150. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you definitely need to look for another solution there. So let's try uh, this one as well. Okay, so there you go. I turn off the light to show you this better because it's just a faint glow. So it's green, so if you adjust the power here. And I know a lot of people were sad when I stopped making these and, uh, sorry. <laughs> like this, it turns red and it turns very brightly red as well. You go up to 12 volt and it shines red. <laughs> then you go back and turn screen so that's uh, nice <laughs> however now let's get back to 5.13 which we had in the other setup I still have the same connections here this is why I made oh this one has fallen out like this okay it shows zero let's uh, turn on the current it's even better <laughs> 46 but uh, I know this one has been smeared a lot with the uh, contact cleaner to uh, get away a lot of resistance in the contacts. But anyway, we are getting closer to that uh, 30 milliamps about so that we're supposed to see over the VDS of the MOSFET. So this one is showing <laughs> a lot more than that. So. I brought out my old VHO <laughs> microscope, so I'm looking at what I've cut. And what I've cut is in the wrong place. It's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be here between Q2 and Q1. Right, so I stripped back some copper hair, so we'll just make a bridge there. And then we'll, we'll try to cut in between here. Turn off the turned up the light on the microscope and uh, I added a little bit of solder there so let's put one of these uh, off cut wires
So we can check here, from here to here. Yeah, no connection. There should be connection from here to up here. It is. So that's good. So that means that this bridge is working. And this cut is also working. Alright, cutting that wire was not the correct thing to do. So I had to do a torch there. <laughs> but now it's alive again. And uh, now over voltage is working. And so let's try over current. So is it working? So I haven't seen this one uh, the LED go on yet. So what we need to do is pull enough current such that this uh, trip point here will be tripped. So because when you pull current here, you will get a voltage out here which I can read with, with a microcontroller. Uh, but it also is read back to the comparators. But what I can do then is take the comparator up to 5 volt. And we should see it latch on. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm just going to demonstrate. So bring that uh, comparator input up to 5 volt. And there you go. Orange. <laughs> I thought it was going to be yellow. But orange it is. And to turn it off we push the button. Like this. <laughs> That's it. So... The idea here is that uh, when you get an overcurrent, it's supposed to hold it off. But uh, for some reason, I haven't made it trip yet. Uh, so, what can we do? Well, we can change these values here. And we change those, we set the overcurrent limit. So, I think it's set a bit high for the moment. Uh, I will come back when I have changed that because it's a bit back and from to do that. So basically how this works is that you have a current going through here which is amplified into voltage here so you can read it. However we are just uh, using it into a comparator which trips when you get over that band gap there. And then it uh, goes up. <laughs> what I've done, I made up a little sheet here so I can change these values. And I come down to 1.365 so I removed R6. I have moved R5 down to R6, so that's 10k there. And then we will find a 5.6k in here somewhere. So 56, yeah. There it goes. So we'll pick up one of those. Right, so I did a little bit of modification here, and uh, you can see over voltage, under voltage is working. I have changed some resistors to make the overcurrent also to detect. Now I have the electronic load, it's a bit messy right now, so but I only use it to trip the uh, overcurrent. So let's uh, turn it on. It's a do it yourself thing. And you can already see it has been cut, but it doesn't really cut, it just indicates because I had to change the circuit. So, and this, uh, this has a. <laughs> function that I can take 100 milliamps at a time or I can click it and then I can go uh, 10 milliamps at a time or 5 I think which is good because then I can get a bit more finer control so just watch this uh, here because uh, the values here are not correct because something is wrong with this uh, reset start okay so I think it's 1.2, so let's just bring it up to 1. There you go. There you go. So now we are at 1 amperes. And then let's go a little bit further. There you go. It's a uh, blink, so it's about 1.18. <laughs> So that's cool. So that is working. However, it's not cutting the power yet. So <laughs> because I had to change the circuit there, and now we can also reset that condition. So it ha uh, so the ship has a latch, so you can reset that. So maybe it's a bit confusing to watch. <laughs> I understand. But this is good. So we know that the overcurrent circuit is working. However, it's not cutting. So what we want to do then is. Um, 
We want to try if we can actually make the uh, overcurrent circuit cut the power also. So I will sacrifice the orange LED and connect a wire from that over to the gate of that uh, transistor. Yes, yeah, so what I'm talking about is this LED. I will sacrifice that, meaning I will take it away and I will dr drag a wire all the way back to this gate. Search that when we have a fault. This one is supposed to turn on, this LED. However, it's not not doing that anymore. It will just drag and get down. Hopefully there is a very little leakage for this so it won't affect this operation. So that's what I'm going to try. And when I try that, I know enough how to change my circuit for the next revision. Which currently is at just 0 0.1. <laughs> yeah. See if the over voltage is still working. And it seems to be working fine. Okay, so will the overcurrent work? Well, we have to see. Okay, we're dragging power here. <laughs> That's working. So let's bring it up. Until it stops. One amperes. Oh look, it cut. That's what we want. And it turned red. Look, we don't have the orange LED anymore. So, so I didn't connect it exactly where I said uh, in the first place. Uh, if you look here, I, instead of connecting it to that gate, I connected it here. So, so this point will be dragged all the way down. So, what can we do now? Uh, let's back off a little bit on the uh, amperes there. And then uh, we can try the reset button. No. Well, reset kind of worked, but maybe the amperes is a bit high. Let's turn off the load. That works. But that's acceptable. We can try and figure out why this isn't working. Um, but turning off the load did work. So, turn on the load again. Maybe the load was a bit high when I turned it off, so... Yeah, let's get it over. Yep, yeah, there it's over. Turn off the load, reset. Yeah, look how fast it uh, gets also. So, I turn on the load. Bang! <laughs> That's really quick. So, let's back off a little bit. Yeah! It seems to be working. So we will set the overcurrent to uh, well over the limits that we think the Commodore will uh, drag. Because otherwise it will it could trigger when it's not supposed to trigger right. And we have to watch out for that inverse current when uh, the computer starts. So if you see here, you can see we have some uh, capacitors on the reset. And uh, this acts like a power on reset uh, function. Yeah, so it will keep it uh, reset at the start. So we'll just time that such that we can um, avoid any problems when you turn it on. However, it could be that when you turn on the Commodore 64, we will get an overcurrent situation when you charge up all the capacitor in the C64. That is something that I think actually will happen, which is something right now is a bit depressing. Uh, is there something I can do about that? Uh, sure, maybe we can slow this circuit down a little bit. Maybe we can change this one such that uh, it doesn't be affected so much about uh, huge pulses. Yeah, so it has to take a bit of time, maybe 20 milliseconds of uh, overcurrent before it actually cuts. Yeah, we could do that. That would actually work. So I have to calculate something here. As you can see, it's all, oh, it's just to be defined. So that's it for this video. So I just want to thank you for watching. So 
yeah bye bye <laughs> yeah well, oh by the way in the next video I will have redesigned this circuit and we'll try it again and we'll also test it in a real machine <laughs>